You're listening. You are singing. To That Gets My Goat. That Gets My Goat. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish. Oh, shoot. What, what is the name? It's just been so long. <laughs> Rish uh, Pseudo Echo. Uh, it might be Drama Rama. I, 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 there was some 80s band. Known for one song. <laughs> and this is That Gets My Goat. Wait, is it That Gets My Goat? Or That Chaps My Hide? What was it the show called? I, I can't remember. I think <laughs> I remember us calling it That Really Pisses Me Off one time. But anyhow. So welcome everybody to the show. It is officially 2015. I know when you hear this, it's almost probably officially 2016 because it takes us that long to turn these things around anymore. But when t years flip over, when people have to buy a new calendar, they have a tendency to uh, examine their lives and uh, decide to make some changes so that this new year won't suck as bad as the year before did. That's um, why Big and I have decided to kill ourselves while podcasting right. right now. It's going to be a live a, death podcast. Um, oh, I like that. Live death. Let's call it that. Change it from That Chaps My Hide. Wait, was that what it's called? I have no idea. <laughs> so the first time we've been able to get together and do this in a while, too. Yeah. Rish has a job now. Knock is... on wood. <laughs> That is, uh, that gets busy around the holiday. I'm sure a lot of you folks listening might understand because there are certain professions that just get busy around the holiday. If you're Mortician being one of them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the mortician will be busy after our live death show as well, but that's neither here nor there. But yeah, so we haven't been able to get together. I was on vacation for a week of December as well, which made that difficult. I think the one monday that you had off was the week that i was in san diego that's right i texted you and said hey are we getting together tonight oh my god no unless you can run really fast <laughs> yeah we were unable to get together for a long time so it's been kind of a while um usually for the last couple years in a row last weekend would have been new media expo for us it would happen right after new year's and it would almost serve as a New Year's thing. Each year, for some reason, we came out of it with a renewed vigor for the show. This year, uh, not only did we decide we weren't going to do New Media Expo, but New Media Expo decided they were going to do their show at a different time of the year. I think they're joining together with some other media conference or something like that and so they're they're happening in april some i don't know what it is but we've kind of decided to bag the whole new media expo thing mostly because it didn't really fall along the lines of what we are trying to do we wouldn't get energized from the speakers at new media expo although last year we did get energized by scott sigler we would get energized by the opportunity to spend time with people that we usually communicate with by email we got to spend time with them in real life i r l how dare you and uh that would always get us excited about our show again we'd record shows while we were there and we'd have a good time and we'd remember the podcasting is rad yeah i remember we were driving back it was in this little tiny car right yep and I was just like, oh, I know we've done like four episodes. Can we do another one? Can we do another one? And you're just like, oh, come on, man. I've got to pee. And I was like, no, no, geez, just keep driving. Here, I was here. really you excited. You can pee in this bottle. And we talked about things that we were going to do and things we were going to accomplish and ways we were going to improve our lives. It was like, a, you know, New Year's had come. And it's like, okay, here's the things that I'm going to do right. I, I don't know. I was really glad that we went last year. And... uh yeah. I, to be honest, I was disappointed we didn't get to do it this year. I mean, you got to hang out with your daughter on her birthday instead of missing it like you did the <laughs> yeah. last two. But. That was a little bit of a bummer to miss that last year. But it, w it would energize us each year, even if we didn't dig on the speakers, we would find something to dig on. This year, I think we're still going to try and do something like that. We're going to try to figure out how we can get together with folks and still do some podcasting and stuff. But uh, we're going to do it by way of something other than New Media Expo. We're, 
either going to find something that fits more along the lines of things that we care about, or maybe we'll just have a little retreat. But that's not, uh, you know, really important to the conversation, I guess. What we're talking about is just New Year's. This year, I, d I don't know, the other day you texted me. No. Uh -oh. And you told me, oh, I was, I, was, I was excited. I was trying to get energized about the show. And I sent Dave Thompson from Podcastle an email asking him if we could read a story for his show. And you were surprised when you got an email back from him when he said, oh, uh, yeah, well, it turns out I have uh, officially passed the show down to someone else today. Yeah, it was the same day he he said uh, you want you might want to check, you know, Facebook, and and that day he had announced that he was uh, retiring, if you will, from uh, pseudo echo. <laughs> and so I said as a joke, well, on the bright side, now we don't have to put together a show for him, and you were like, oh come on, where is Big Anklevich, and what have you done with him? You're the one that's supposed to be excited around New Year's time and make me excited or something like that. I don't remember. But why is it, do you think, what is it about this year? Is it just the lack of New Media Expo? What is it that has made, I don't know, are you excited about the show, about doing things, about writing, about getting your stuff out there? Are you gung-ho in any way about that kind of stuff right now, or has the... The New Year's spirit not caught for you. Well, I, I don't think I'm where you are. I'm still wanting to do things in this new year and make it a better year than last. And I want to buckle down now that I'm not working as much as I was and, you know, get some of my obligations out of the way. And, and yeah, try and get the show back on course. But last year, if you recall, we were like all into like writing songs and <laughs> and, you know, so, oh, and we'll do this and we'll do this sketch and stuff for another episode. And some of those things fell through, but we actually accomplished a couple of them. And we just did so much recording during that weekend. It was great. I, I, you were just mentioned today. There's one other thing that I had forgotten about that we recorded there that we, we still haven't released. There's there two. two things because one of them, you mm -hmm. know, you remembered, but hasn't been released. Another thing you'd forgotten about that hasn't been released. You know, it, it's it's just natural to, you know, once the ball drops or uh, it's time to go back to school or, or whatever once it is, Christmas is hits. yeah, Christmas is over. It's the uh, the next thing to think about is uh, what are you going to do over the new year? And and yeah, I'm not a huge fan of resolutions because I've been known to not succeed in them, and I take that badly. But I still looked at the calendar and I'm like, okay, I'm going to work a little bit harder. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do like an outlandishly long version of my own show. I'm going to publish more stories. I think they've it, changed that word now. It's uh, it's actually outfieldishly long. Mm. The kids are saying that these I days. I like that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, if we had had the New Media Expo, I think I'd be on you like White on Rice saying, oh, okay, let's do this, and I've written this, and this is the tune that we're going to sing it to, and and all that, and I, all I needed was that little boost because I was already. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to, to go for it. I just, uh, all I needed was a the goose in the butt of, mm -hmm. of New Media Expo of, of that of being around people that are creative. And you know, like we just mentioned, Dave Thompson. It was a year ago we met that guy. I'd never actually hung out with him or met him or anything like that. And just to be around somebody like that who has that many listeners of his show, may he rest in peace. And, uh, you know, <laughs> around Abby Hilton, who who loves to show us numbers. It, she's autistic in that way, you know. <laughs> she, you know, she'll she'll share, like, how many something sold or how many people downloaded something. And I'll just be like, no way! Dude, I can do that. And that sort of thing is neat. I'm around creative people who have their own careers or side jobs or creative outlets, at least. Uh -huh. And it makes me think, you know what? I have a creative outlet. Why am I just letting that stay there with with dust on it? And oh, dude, there's a dead fly. Somebody used Big Anklevich's book to squash it. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's the kind of thing that I uh, I respond to, to. You know, to be around people, I f find that infectious. When uh huh, I, I I think that might be part of the problem for me. Usually, having that boost gets me excited again. To my credit, I did come up with an idea for a skit to use. 
for our first episode after the new year, if you recall. It was a callback to last year's songs. Yeah, okay. Um, and I shot that down like a master missile command player. That's right. Sorry, I'm trying to think of a more modern reference, but... Uh, but yeah, I think it must have something to do with the fact that we didn't have that to give us that boost again this year. Because that boost lasted for a while. I mean, we, we did a lot of stuff and we went through probably at least June doing at least two episodes a month before we ever started to flag again. Yeah, we recorded an episode driving back where we talked about all the things we were going to accomplish and we were going to have everybody get assigned episodes. We are going to call up all our producers and say, here's when it's due. And, and for a while there, yeah, the return on investment or whatever you want to call it was just really, really great. And we had to have put out more episodes in the first six months than we did the whole year before. Yeah, I think we did. But we still managed to do some good things. We still managed to, even though we did it last minute slapdash, throw it together style we managed to get in our 13 nights of halloween marathon and we got most of the way i I think through the uh triple word score stories i think we still have a few left but um, yeah that boggles my mind how can we still have (laughs) some of those we took a lot of them is the problem we accepted a lot you were the one that drew the cutoff line if you recall and you drew the cutoff line one story lower than even i drew the cutoff line so there you go. So it's my fault. Yes, of course. Everything is your fault. One good thing, I suppose, for you is that, that now you've got more time because your job doesn't require there to be like 20 people. Now there's nobody there. So that's got to be good and make it easier to accomplish something. This time of year <laughs> is always a little hard for me to concentrate on stuff because my favorite sport in the world is football and NFL hits their playoffs right at this time. And this year is even different than most years because because of all the crap that was going on at the start of the season. And one of my favorite players is Adrian Peterson, and he was arrested for abusing his child, of all things, which I would have never expected. It it sapped my excitement, my usual excitement for NFL football. So I didn't watch any of it. And then the playoffs finally made it around, and I got excited again about football, and I realized I haven't seen anything from the entire season. But unlike normal, where I just have to be like, well, I guess I missed it, I have a, a, an app that and a subscription to it where I can watch all the games from the year. So what I've On been, your phone? Yeah, on my phone or my tablet or on my computer or whatever, I can just put up a game, and I can watch them, and I can watch them in condensed fashion, which is really cool takes all that time in between plays out and so i can watch a whole game in like 30 minutes and uh yeah it's it's handy so i've I've been going back and wasting all my free time and watching the entire football season not the entire thing i just go through each week and say like oh that's probably a good game so i'll watch that one and so yeah i'm wasting all my time doing that instead of what i should have Uh, the ankle cast which I have been putting out each week really close to the start of the month. I haven't even considered doing it. Um, And it's, what, the 12th, the 13th, something like that today? So we're basically halfway through the month, and I still haven't done it. Part of it was that I was sick, and my voice was weird. And the other part of it is I'd have to get on there and play my I Have Five Years theme song and then admit that I can't get up the excitement to give a crap about my five-year goal right now, which sucks, and I need to change that. (laughs) Um, You'd be damned. I'd be damned if I let my five-year goal go after only three months. I need to get my excitement back. Well, how do you do that? Do you just have to wait until the Super Bowl is done and then say, okay, all the energy I had dedicated towards football, I now will dedicate toward writing and podcasting and blogging or what? I mean, yeah, I looked at your blog today just because I figured I haven't heard from him in a while, but he's posted all sorts of crazy crap. And (laughs) and there wasn't anything there since December, but for a while there in December, you were really on it, man. I had like two or three different kinds of goals in my whole five-year thing. One of them was to write. The other one was to get stories that I have written already published for people to read. And that was the one that I kept falling down on. I kept not 
achieving. And you kept getting on my case and saying, oh, are you publishing? You just need to publish it. Well, you're a piece of crap. Why don't you publish anything? You saw, I published five things today and you have, you still haven't done anything, you know, and I finally forced myself in December to figure this crap out. And I went through and I formatted a story. And once I'd done it once, I just copied and pasted basically and uh, went through and changed a couple of things here and there. And then boom, I had a new one. And so I was able to publish four stories on Smashwords in in December. So that was finally the month where I was good at that. But I wasn't so great at writing just because, I don't know, December's hard. It's a hard month to be able to... I don't know if you had... I'm sure you probably had similar problems to me just because you had no free time. But uh, I didn't get any writing done while I was on vacation, despite the fact that I brought my tablet and its hook-on keyboard so that I could... And I made sure to, you know, have everything all downloaded on there and ready to go so that I could do it. And I never did. Getting time aside from that was difficult because you're every night you have to go to this party. You have to go to this thing or this recital or this concert or this whatever. Because all the school things have to be done in December and et cetera, et cetera. So I didn't do a good job with writing at all. And our podcast, I wrote that story specifically for the dune steve and we managed to get it out i think it wasn't until the 26th that we published. was it really oh i thought it, you'd gotten it, it out may before have, christmas it may if i did get it out it was christmas day mm. that i put it out which is of course not ideal because that's when people are done with christmas and it's usually not when people are like hmm i wonder if my favorite podcast has its christmas episode out yet do are there people that call us their favorite podcast or were you referring to like escape from oh uh, well yeah uh, nobody calls us their favorite oh, podcast okay. i'm sure well uh, there are those people at the mental hospital <laughs> that's right that we went and visited that one time you remember that i do remember that and uh, we brought up whether Forcing them to listen to it was, you know, against the Geneva Convention. And they're like, well, this is their next of kin all sign a waiver. Yeah. So whatever we they deem. Said, this is, this is uh, the modern uh, version of uh, shock therapy. So, Well, what's the solution, man? How can I encourage you to write again and to publish your writings and all that stuff? Or is it something that I can't encourage that you have to do it yourself? Well, you can encourage because encouragement always helps. I mean, we can talk about today. I've been, what was it, three or four weeks ago, we went out to pizza and I told you my new plan where, okay, I'm going to lose weight by doing this. I have to be really good during the week. And if I'm really good, then I can get a soda when you and I go out for pizza on Monday nights. Then the next time we went out for pizza, I'm like, I'm getting a soda. And you're like, wait, wait, wait. You said you had to be really good. And I said, shut up. <laughs> I'm getting a soda. Yes, you did. Don't you cross me. <laughs> that girl behind the counter. <laughs> and But today, you weren't even uh, pushy about it. You're just like, I'm getting a water. <laughs> what are you getting? <laughs> and so I said, all right, I'll get a water too. So, you know, encouragement helps. I mean, that's helped me a lot of times. There's been several times where, you know, I promised that I would do something to you, and that's the only reason I actually did it. <sighs> the first time we ever did a broken mirror story, I challenged you to do it and then never started my story until I got your finished story in my email. <laughs> and I felt so guilty that I had challenged you and still hadn't even written mine that I actually put in the time and wrote it. Well, in 2014, we did a couple of those broken mirror things. I thought it was pretty successful. We could challenge ourselves to do it again in 2015. I don't know where the motivation came from there, but we both did it. Yeah, we could definitely do challenges. You know, when it comes down to it, just putting in the time and writing, just making myself do it the first time may be all it will take because I enjoy writing. I really do. Sometimes I avoid it, which is silly because, I, I mean, I guess it, it is work, but it's fun work. And if I once I get going on it, and especially when you have a good day, you're riding and it just flows and, and you're enjoying yourself and you're liking it and you're thinking you're doing a good job. It's like you're 
fall in love with the world all over again or something. I don't know. It, it, it's pretty good. So it may be just that I need to sit down and put in some time again. I wrote January 1st. My, my goal was 20,000 words for this month. But January 1st is the only day that I wrote. I did write 500 words that day. Well, you're on your way. Huh? <laughs> I'll have to really kick it up a notch if I want to come anywhere close to that. Well, we did that blogging, write, blog writing thing last year uh -huh. as well, which I thought was pretty successful. Where we were both like, okay, I'm going to write a story here in public for people to read. And that way they'll never, ever buy it when I put it for sale. <laughs> <laughs> and both of us succeeded. Yeah. The funny thing is, if you write the story in secret and show it to no one, they also will never ever buy it uh, when you put it on sale. I've okay. learned I've learned that that it works both ways. I I think <laughs> it doesn't work both ways. Right. Okay. Saying. Okay. That's probably a more proper way to put it. But see, that was another thing, and I know that there were people that commented that were and that were enjoying reading those things. I just, I, yeah. yeah, I wish there was a way to harness that. There was a point where. And put a where... dollar sign on that and just have like a constant repeating motivational fountain. Yeah. There was a point where I was uh, considering doing that with everything that I wrote. Just yeah, I remember you posting saying that. it automatically. But yeah, I thought it might be interesting to try writing a story without showing it to people and then see if they buy it. Now that I know they won't, <laughs> I could go back to that though. Well, whatever gets you motivated. I mean, I, th I thought it was neat when someone would email me. I'm trying to remember who it was. It was Gino or somebody like that. Which was like, hey, it's been four days or whatever. What happened with this story? And I was like, wow. Um, what happened was I didn't care. <laughs> and I still don't care, but I'm going to force but myself a little finish. bit just because of you. I, I don't know. I like that. I like being held accountable. But more, I just like the idea that somebody cares, that somebody wants to know what happens next or, or is enjoying it or, you know, whatever the deal is. I, we've, we've had this conversation a million times, and I guess we'll continue to have it until the podcast crumbles into dust. But I do wonder about other people and what their, where their motivation comes from. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are the real writers out there say, my motivation just comes within. I'm uh -huh. not a pussy like you. I just uh, tell myself I've got to do it, and then I do it. Or sometimes it even gets done without me doing it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> so I, go, I just have somebody ghostwrite it for me. I'm James Patterson. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? I don't know. <laughs> they don't actually ghostwrite because they do get their name in much smaller type underneath his name. Yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things that seems to ebb and flow always. My New Year's tends to much more often be my birthday as opposed to... New Year's itself. When I get motivated, it's, oh, I'm this many years old. By the time I am this many years old, I want to do this. And uh, I'll, I'll set up, you know, goals. And that's what I did with the whole five years thing is when I turned 40 years, 40 freaking years old. Hey. I decided that I needed to uh, put that five year thing in, into being and i i looked at those actually when new year's passed i pulled up the goals that i had written up and i might need to rework them a little i know that some stuff needs some help now that i've actually tried to make them happen and stuff i need to uh i know what i can do what i can't do what is ready to go what isn't ready to go that kind of stuff and i, I need to adjust the goals so that it, they're ones that I can work towards again. But yeah, just having this conversation I think is worth it because I feel more motivated to do stuff because I've got it out in the open and you know, I've whipped it out and shown it to everybody and and they've all laughed and <laughs> believe me, I know I'll do well. <laughs> and now I can put it away and work on improving. <laughs> But yeah, it makes me feel like, uh... Feel like what? Feel like I'm being watched! Oh, wait, put your weapon... I'm, I can't, I'm sorry. Continue, I derailed you there, so intentional. It, it makes me feel now a little bit more excited about doing stuff. Maybe I still could make 20,000 words. I still have almost 20 days left in the month. 
if I did a thousand words a day, I may well get over 20,000. I don't know, but if this car were to just break down one more time, <laughs> you'd make it. Do you remember? You wrote a ton okay, that yeah. one day. The, the car was... Yeah, it was like 2,500 words in one day. And I wrote like 2,000 words the night before, too. I did like 5,000 words in two See, days, that's which is stuff. a lot for me. It didn't actually break down. That's why I was slightly confused. I just needed new tires. Oh, okay. Well, that shows how much I was paying attention when you <laughs> told the story. But yeah, if I just put in that much effort, I could still make my goal, despite the fact that I've done nothing since the first, and it's the 12th. So I took a third of the month and lopped it off. Do you but ever you make know. monthly goals of word count or anything like that for yourself? I did a couple of years ago when we were trying, or I was trying desperately to find some system that would work. There, there was somebody had introduced us to the magic spreadsheet, uh -huh. and I followed that for a little while. And somebody, there was a Facebook group called uh, 25 Stories 52 Weeks or something like that, Maybe where you're supposed way. to write one no, every right. other week, you know, and, uh -huh. and I was part of that, and, you know, okay, I can do it. Yeah, I, I did well with that one for a short, short period as well. I got, like, four or five stories. But as has been the theme to this episode you know eventually that excitement wears off and you're just left with a blank sheet of paper and are you going to do it and sometimes i i succeed and sometimes i fail and i, I haven't figured out why yet i'm am a loser but i'm not a complete loser so there have been times when i've actually achieved my goals or made my writing word amount that i was shooting for you know and but you still haven't achieved completion of your loserness. Okay. <laughs> I, oh, wait, that's not your goal you were shooting for, to be a complete no. loser? <laughs> I, I'm not sure where it comes from, except for, you know, ultimately you have to make yourself do it. And there are times when all it just takes is, you know, doing yard work or going for a walk or you're driving along and the CD ends or whatever and you don't put another CD in for a minute and you just your mind wanders or you... Or something happens to you and, you, and that's a springboard for some something creative or some idea that, oh, I'd love to write that down. I don't know. For me, one of the big things is when we go camping. And, uh, you know, I can really only go camping in the summertime because the, the cabin is snowed in the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. But in, at that cabin, there's no Internet. There's no television. The one radio station that plays is from this little town where they are well aware that there aren't any other radio stations. So they'll play rock and roll and country and easy listening and oldies all on this same station. And it's so weird to hear it because you know, it's just like, that was the river by Garth Brooks. Now we got Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. And I'd be like, what? In what universe are these two songs back to back? <laughs> that Although, was Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. And now here's one by Metallica. Yeah. And, well, I just realized <laughs> that Taylor Swift used to be a country artist. And so I can see why you'd say those two back to back. But anyway, I, I di digress. There's so few distractions there at the cabin that I always force myself. I'm going to write sometimes, you know, it's like, I'm going to write a whole story and I don't get to go to bed until that's done kind of thing. And I love that. I, I you know, you'll hear real writers say that you need a computer that's not hooked up to the internet. That's not got a bunch of games on it. That's not got 14 gig of porn on it. That's just your writing computer. And that's all you use it for. And you go to that and there's not as many distractions and you're not playing solitaire, you're writing or an office that doesn't have a TV and a radio and all that stuff, or even a window to look out. You know, it's like, that's what it is, is you go in there and you write. I, you know, I think that if that works for you, that's great. And I, I have thought about that a bunch of times. I'm sure you have too. Of Just like, okay, I'm going to have a computer that's only for writing and I'm going to sit myself at it and force myself to write there. But the forcing yourself is the, the, the main thing. You've got to force yourself to do it. Whatever works, works, but you have to do it. It's in your hands or your lap or your head or wherever your motivation comes from. That's definitely the case. Your motivation comes from within. Okay. Is that from uh, something? Just from your comment earlier about what real writers say. Oh, okay. It's not you. Know, the mountain is waiting. I knew that's <laughs> But your mountain is waiting, so you should get on your way. Yeah, I should. You should stop this or, or at least check and see if it's still recording. <laughs> Well, okay, let, let's just finish this thing up and we'll go our way and we'll write something. But 
let's end on some kind of positive note. Uh, I know that life can be negative and difficult, and I can be certainly negative. Look how fat you are, by the way. But let's end on some positive note where, of encouragement of, you know, this is what we're going to do, or this is how I'm going to okay. do it. You're not that fat. <laughs> All right. Well, my my goal, my promise to you is that I will record the uh, ankle cast that I've been avoiding since the month turned, I will record it tomorrow on my way to work. Which, to tell you the truth, will be a trial. Because I am well into the middle of an audiobook that I am really enjoying. <laughs> and I will have to not listen to it to uh, be able to record this. But the sooner you finish that ankle cast, the sooner you'll be able to push play again. That's true. So I'll make it a shorty. <laughs> Usually they tend to last about the length of my commute. Mm. But uh, we'll see if I have that much to say. I don't know. I may have said everything that I would have said in the ankle cast in this. Well, probably uh, that gets yeah. my goat now, so I may have nothing to say. But saying it, to putting it forth, and saying I'm going to do this, I, I could write. I, I set myself a goal of twenty thousand words, and all that. Saying it again is just going to strengthen your resolve, right? Yes. And I also promise that I will write tomorrow, and I will see if I can still get my goal. 20,000 words in the month. It's possible. It will take effort, but I could do it. The good thing is I'm already to, I think, week 11 of the football season, <laughs> so I'm nearly done. So I should I should be able to, uh, to really get going, and uh, that's what I'm going to do because I got five years. That's all we got! Oh, wow. That hurt, man. <laughs> So are we done, or do are you expecting you gotta, me to say yes? Sense? The hell! Well, I'm the one that did we're, all right. We're a joint podcast here, man. We both are are equal partners in this thing. So you gotta you gotta pony up as well. Okay, well, I I think I'm doing all right. Actually, I'm really close to finishing the story. And oh, yeah, you you already told me that you like wrote like four stories. <laughs> I did finish a story in 2015, and I'm very close, like a day away, or, you know, one sitting away from finishing a second one, but... Uh, okay, that's your goal. Make that sitting and finish it. Boom! Well, yeah, I, I, I can do that, but I was going to do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I figured you wanted me to challenge myself to say oh, something okay, that's sorry. hard. Okay, well, that's, that's your, here's your something. quick goal, is finish that story, your okay, a, midterm goal. A month from now... Is the absolute worst day of the year, okay? It's only a month away. What's so bad about February 12th? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I think it's past the 12th by today. Anyhow, uh, last year, or fudge, it was a year before or whatever, I wrote a sketch that was going to be for Valentine's Day. It was going to oh, be a fun yeah. little sketch that I, I thought it would be fun, and I, I thought that I could get, like, Scribe Harris to record it with me when we went to New Media Expo, but she didn't come. And so it's like, oh, okay, well, now I'm screwed because, you know, as talented as she is, she's more known for not making deadlines or returning emails. <laughs> and so I thought, well, uh, I guess that will just have to die. But then I thought, you know, February 14th comes every year around this time. It's kind of like that awful Beach Boys song. Where Christmas comes each time this year. Oh, it's the worst line. Holy Christmas cow. Christmas comes this time each year. They say it again it and again and again in that terrible Merry song. Merry Christmas, Santa. Christmas comes each time this year. I thought, well, you know, I don't think we did anything for Valentine's Day last year, but maybe I can do this for Valentine's Day this year. But maybe I could make that my goal right here in front of everybody, that that, that I would produce that. or or. All right, so that's goal number two. And you're going to write a novel this year, right? That was your third goal? No. Well, we talked about that. You were much more hip to the idea of writing a novel last I'm November. I'm also hip to be square. Okay. Well, I'm way ahead of you on that one. So, But yeah, I, I'm supposed to put out these damn audiobooks, and, and it just I don't want to do it. I, I had an experience in 2014 that put me off of audiobooks forever, and I... Ah, it's I had a bad experience. <laughs> what, what, what was it? Why don't you tell me? I was like, I had! So anyhow, it's been hard for me to get back on the horse. And yesterday, I think it was, I thought, I'm going to sit here and I'm just going to record for like three hours. And that way I'll get like, you know, 10 chapters done or whatever. 
And after like the third chapter, it's like, no, I'm going to throw this against the wall. I don't want to do any more chapters. <laughs> it's not even a bad book. It's a Dean Wesley Smith book, and I find that to be a, a you know a, a tremendous opportunity because people actually know who he is, and maybe he has like a, a fan base or whatever that's going to want to listen to this. But it's just so hard to make myself do it. I mean, it goes hand in hand with what we were talking about. Uh, so anyway, that's one of my goals. I got to finish that thing. The, the deadline is January thirtieth. Okay. And so that's one of my goals for this month. I'm going to finish that darn. And it's a good book. I don't mean to badmouth it. And uh, and so there's that. And, yeah, I've got to put out more of my own stories and all that stuff. There, you know, there's a bunch of stories where I'm like, oh, this one's safe to share. Oh, that one I better not share. And I wish I could get past that mindset as well. Well, I'll we'll have to figure out how to do that. Maybe repeated kicks to the crotch might help. Damn it. All right. So that's what Rish is going to be doing. Those are his goals. His goal for this month finish exceptional for valentine's day to finish the story that needs one sitting and to finish uh, the audiobook that you have do you have other uh obligations and audiobooks still waiting hanging over your head oh i do yeah but uh <laughs> this is the one that i wanted to do so i thought all right i'll put it at the top of my uh, priority okay, so list. you're gonna finish that one and then maybe we'll have to look at some other goals, maybe for next month's episode. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would be neat if we actually achieved these and people were proud of us and, and we're like, oh, okay, well, in February we'll do one too. And also you were going to write a novel this year, right? <laughs> oh, how do I write a novel? <laughs> That's a whole topic for another conversation. I, it would be fun to do an episode about it, but I don't know how one goes about writing a novel and I don't know that I have any ideas that are novel-worthy. But we could talk about that in another episode. Okay, we'll have to do that. Maybe that'll be the next episode of uh, That Really Chaps My Hide. Stop it! <laughs> okay, so your goals are stop beating your wife. Uh-huh. Have you stopped beating your wife? Not yet. Okay. It, um, i got to work on that. So that, that's why it's a goal. Record an ankle <laughs> cast and put it out in the next two days. Okay. Get rid of the cat. you got to get rid of the fudging cat. I went in the bathroom, and you know what I found? It was like a cat thing. <laughs> for you had set a goal of twenty thousand words, and I'm gonna for the month, and, and you're it. still going to shoot for it, uh, which means that you've got to write every single day, yeah, either, yeah. either a little bit or a lot every single day. Yeah, a fair amount, a lot. Getting a thousand words in a day is a pretty big achievement for me usually. So, getting a thousand words twenty days in a row, yeah, that I mean that's a bigger achievement. That's an but working toward that goal. I mean, it's not like it's an all or nothing thing. If you only did, you know, 8,000 words or whatever, at least you'd written 8,000 words, That's which true. is more than you've written at this That's point. That's true. Definitely. As long as I work towards it and put some effort in, it'll be worth it one way or the other. Okay. And here's one more goal. You had said, we were talking before we started recording, that Gino Moretto did cover art for a story of yours called The Tenth Album. I need you to brush that dang thing off and look at it and get it ready to publish. You don't have to publish it in January. But, you know, put it on your list of things that you have. Have it ready to be read. That's supposed to be an episode. That's episode art he's made for Oh, it. my Lord. Are you kidding? No. Okay, well, let's take all that back then. Kill yourself. <laughs> 20,000 words. Ankle cast. Stop beating your wife. Those are your four goals. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Hopefully we haven't depressed you. Maybe hearing this kind of talk gets you inspired to shoot for something more. Because I think that's good. Everybody should be trying to accomplish something. Your life is more exciting, more worthwhile if that's the case. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I know we can do better. It's something that's in the back of my mind. And, and for a while there last year, we did do better. Yeah. And that's we a double-edged do sword. Because, yeah, we've shown that we're capable. <laughs> so... All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. Happy 2015. That's right. In 2015, your mountain is waiting. So, so why not? Get on your way. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. Boy, they must really think a lot of themselves. 
I don't think we did anything for Valentine's Day last year, but we, maybe I can do this for Valentine's Day this year. And then I thought, well, that would take work, and I'd have to talk to somebody. And <laughs> But maybe I could make that my goal right here in front of everybody, that that, that I would produce that. or, or That would be ready by this time each year? Well, what do you think? Is that doable, or, is, or am I screwed? Because it's not like I can just call you and say, okay, you're going to be the girl. Because <laughs> you, you would do it. You I would be like, okay. Hi. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well. It sounds like that Muppet with the long blonde hair. Was that voiced by a man? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I think it was. Well, man. I don't know. I, how, how would I go about that? You would get a woman really, to, let me take notes. to read the lines for you. And there are several women that are friends of the show that I know would be willing to do that. You well, just decide. off the air, you'll have to tell me who those people are. You just yeah. decide. Yeah, 